we have another rare find, I believe, because it's got some beautiful inlay on this lovely coffee table. And I just wanna show you the sheen of this. It is high, high gloss. And it's got a few scratches here and there, but we just could not resist this when we saw the detail in the legs and on the table skirt, and especially the inlay on this table. We've got a couple of different woods here and they're doing a nice floral pattern. So uh, I've washed it. There's a couple of coffee rings here. Just washed it with some TSP. And since it's such a high sheen, normally you would want to sand it, but I'm going to be using our new brush on gel stain. And this color is going to be a double espresso. So we're going to put one coat over top of the whole top and the areas where there's some scratches, it's just gonna, you know, kind of pool in there a little bit, but it will even out. There won't be any brush strokes. And it's going to have a bit of a matte finish. So we're gonna go from this high, high lacquer sheen, glossy sheen, to a very matte finish. So just cleaned it. I'm not gonna bother sanding it. I'm just going to apply. And then the lower part, the skirt and the legs, I'm gonna come along with some paint. And because it's such a high sheen, I will have to do a bit of a scuff sand onto that area because it's really difficult for a VOC-free water-based product to adhere to these high sheen lacquers. And I know it's a high uh, it's a lacquer because it's very brittle. The areas where it has chipped off, I can actually put my finger you know, underneath it and flick it up and it's very, very uh, chippy. So yeah, I'm just going to sand here, but first I'm going to apply the brush on gel stain to the top. And as that's drying, I'm gonna to start to do the lower part. This is not something that you wanna shake. You just wanna stir it and I've already done that because if you shake it, it's sort of like a polyurethane or the Ultra Grip or the Tough Coat. You shake it and you're going to introduce bubbles and then you're going to basically apply those, that bubbly film onto your painted or onto your piece and it's gonna dry like that. And it's certainly not something that you wanna end up with. Very bumpy surface. Okay, so. Um, I have not sanded the top. This product is not a VOC free product like many of our other products are. So you will want to crack the window open a little bit, but you know, it's not totally disgusting either. We've used the bare minimum of solvent in this product. So I'm using the two inch bristle brush here. I don't tend to use an expensive brush for this type of a job because I'm probably gonna throw it out when I'm done with it. So I have stirred it about half an hour ago and you can see it's a nice dark color. It's really quite thin, or at this point it's thin. Had I not stirred it, it's actually kind of like a jello consistency when you open it up. But I stirred it earlier and now it's gotten nice and thin. So it's somewhat, it's pigmented, but it's also somewhat translucent. So I'll still be able to see this beautiful inlay on this tabletop. It doesn't dry right away. You have a little bit of a, an open time, a good half an hour. Initially, as you're brushing across, you will see some bubbles and some brush strokes, but that all flattens out. Now I've come across a couple of the scratches and this is just going right into those scratchy areas and absorbing right in to the substrate. So I don't think it's gonna stand out like a sore thumb. They certainly did stand out prior to coating them. Finished putting the brush on gel stain 
to the top of this wonderful little coffee table. And I'm just, I've made sure that nobody's going to be creating any dust because I don't want that to land on there and create a bumpy finish for me tomorrow. Uh, the window is open just a little bit for some fresh air. Now I'm coming along with the paint, fusion mineral paint in the color Cathedral Taupe. And why we've chosen this is, well, again, the room that this is going to be going into, the Cathedral Taupe is going to be perfect. So I'm going to be painting the skirt and the legs in this color. And then later, I'm going to be coming along with the glaze. And what the glaze is going to do it's going to go into the recessed areas, and especially pronounced in these legs. I mean, I just really love this. So the darker glaze is going to really accentuate that carving. I'm going to be using, again, Stahlmeister. It's the round brush, number 22, and this is perfect for this particular job. I just humidified my brush not too long ago put it into some water and I rang out all of the excess water. And just to ensure that you don't have any excess water in here, you take a white paper towel, just give it a squeeze. But it has moistened the natural bristle within this brush. Remember that the white is a natural bristle and the red is a synthetic bristle. And that really deposits the paint onto the piece very nicely and it's the natural bristle that kind of holds the paint into your brush so you don't have to go and dip your paint brush in several times to complete a small job or a large job. <laughs> okay. Got pretty good coverage with this color. You can see right away. Just applying a thin coat Depending on the pressure that you're using, you can actually push and remove some of the paint off of this surface. It's a very flat, lacquered surface, but we have sanded it so that it just gives this shiny surface a bit of tooth so that the paint can really grip onto it. But as I'm pushing down, you can really almost see streaks of the undercoat. So you just have to get a consistent pressure with your hand. You could probably get away with one coat on this, but I think we're gonna go for two. Just to ensure it's brush stroke free. There's a nice little edge along here too where you know the glaze is gonna kind of sit underneath and it's going to really pronounce that. It's almost going to highlight the skirt of this table. Let's see, I'm going to paint the leg here just to... It'll brighten up this table a little bit as well. Too much wood can be, you know, a little imposing. So a little mixture of the natural wood along with the painted wood. It's going to look really nice. What I find as well when you're painting furniture, especially legs like this, if you put another little piece of wood underneath it, then you can get all around it pretty easily without getting any paint on the floor. We have a drop cloth here, but in some situations where you can't lift up your furniture um, onto something this high, you just wanna do one leg at a time and just put it up onto a block or something, a little wooden block. just. All you need at the most is one inch off the ground.